everyone. I hope you guys are having an absolutely wonderful day. Um, today, we are going to be doing an introduction of a writing. So last in the last couple of weeks, you guys have taken a baseline pre-assessment for writing, and we're going to be starting to learn the different components of our multi-paragraph essay and what that truly means. So today, you're just going to watch a video and answer some questions on Edpuzzle, and throughout the week, we're going to start breaking it down into our sentences and going all the way up into our paragraph structure. So when we talk about writing, there's several different things that are components of it and go into it. Um, the very first basic part is actually having your words. Your words make up all of your writing, okay? Your words then turn into complete sentences. These complete sentences slowly turn into a paragraph, which turn into multi-paragraphs, which means more than one paragraph. And finally, they become essays, which are these long, uh, these long paragraph structures that explain the answers to your writing. So it starts all the way down to the basic word. Are we spelling the words correctly? Are we using our prefixes, suffixes, and root words to help us identify these words? All the way to these complex multi-paragraph essays that we are going to be working on. This year as a fifth grader, you are expected to write between four to five paragraphs. Um, a good rule of thumb is whenever you are writing, however, whatever your grade level is, so you're in fifth grade, you should be able to write about five paragraphs. In third grade, we look for you to write about three paragraphs, fourth grade about four paragraphs, and fifth grade about five paragraphs. Um, but Anywhere from four to five paragraphs works really great, just depending on what the actual question is asking is how you would uh, answer it and use that many paragraphs, okay? So it all starts with our word origin, which was our root words that we talked about last Friday, or I'm sorry, last Thursday. So all words come from somewhere. We specifically focus on words that come from Greek and Latin roots, and we build off of those Greek and Latin roots. So if you see down below here for our roots, um, we're gonna be learning a new root word today, struct. But with our root words, we also have our prefixes and our suffixes that go into them. Our prefixes again go before a word and our suffixes go at the end of a word. Prefixes, roots, and suffixes all change the meanings of those different word parts. After we start talking about um, building these words, they fit into categories of what we call parts of speech. Some of you are starting to see these parts of speech in Lexia because Lexia constantly hits on them for many, many different levels because it wants to make sure that you understand that different words in the different parts of speech all have a different meaning. So the ones that you are probably most familiar with are your nouns, your verbs, your adjectives, your pronouns, and your adverbs. These are the most common ones that we tend to talk about um, every day. But in fifth grade, we're gonna also start talking about conjunctions, interjections, and prepositions, which I accidentally covered at the bottom, I apologize. But for now, you should know your nouns, a person, place, or thing, your verbs, which are something that you do in action, and your adjectives things that describe nouns. All right, for your text organization, we have words, sentences, paragraphs, and essays that can be organized in specific ways to explain information. And each one of these things just depends on what the question is asking you. These are also our text structures of informational writing that we're gonna be learning about later in the school year. We have things such as chronological order, also known as sequential order. This means we're putting things in order of time. First, next, then last. This one goes very closely with our plot sequence that we worked on in small groups. The next one is our main idea and our key details. So our main idea support, our main idea is what our whole story is about and our key details support that main idea. Comparing and contrasting. So there's that uh, word compare, we're going to talk about contrast this week. So talking about how things are the same, talking about how things are different. We have cause and effect. So one thing happens 
and what happens after that. So the cause, something happens. And what was the effect? What became of that problem? And our last one is problem and solution. Cause and effect and problem and solution sometimes are easily confused. The difference is with cause and effect, um, there's not always something that is solved like there isn't a solution. It's just something happens, so something else happens after it. Whereas a problem and solution, there is a problem and there is something that is proposed to solve that problem. We're going to be talking about three different types of writing um, for essays this year. Uh, we're going to be talking about narrative writing, which tells a story, usually with characters, setting, and plot. And explanatory writing, which explains true, flat, true facts, such as an explanatory essay. So this one, you're talking strictly facts and you're explaining them with more information from the informational text. The last one is persuasive. This means that you're trying to convince someone to do or think a certain way. You're trying to convince them to agree with you, persuading them to agree. These are the three types of writing that we're going to be working on this year. So what makes a good writing? Typically, all of your good writings are going to have your key ideas, so the most important things that you're trying to convey. It's got to be organized. It's got to make sense. If it's all over the place and disconjumbled, nobody's going to be able to follow your writing and understand what you're trying to talk about. When we say voice, we want it to come from you. It shouldn't be copied and pasted from online. It needs to be your writing displaying who you are and what you believe, especially with those persuasive writings. The word choice is very specific, and that goes back to those parts of speech, your nouns, your verbs, your adjectives, pronouns, conjunctions, prepositions, all of that goes into that word choice. Your sentence fluency, so making sure your sentences flow into the next one, um, showing that they all go together. This one goes very closely with our organization. Last one is the conventions. So these are our rules for writing. These are things like capital letters, spacing, punctuation marks, indenting your paragraphs, um, using transitional phrases. These are all things that go with our conventions of writing. Oops, I apologize. There we go. So here are some of our other conventions. Um, so the, our rules for writing, so sentences, every sentence is beginning with a capital letter, every sentence ends with a punctuation mark because a period is not always necessary, and complete sentences have a subject and a predicate, so that's very similar to like a noun and a verb, and we will talk about those as one of our first lessons. Your paragraphs need to be indented at the beginning of each paragraph and that you should be skipping a line after each paragraph. So you have to hit that enter button on your keyboard. We'll talk about those more as we go. All right, so for literary analysis, this just means that we're making sure that our paragraphs and our writing is very in depth. So one of the first things that we talk about are some varied sentence lengths. Some sentences might be really short, and some might be really long. They might be conjunct conjunction sentences. So where we use words like and, because, or there are, um, they explain in more depth. Those are your longer ones. Your short ones are just stating those quick facts. Um, we're also making sure that we're using a nice variety of sentence types. We also wanna make sure we're including sensory details if this is applicable. So that means that if we're seeing things that are like, um, if we're seeing things in a narrative writing, we want to make sure when we're describing our characters, we want to say what our characters see, what they hear, what they taste, smell, touch. We're using those five sentences to really enhance our writing. Nobody wants to read a boring paper, and everybody knows that. Um, all students at some point have read, and this includes me, have read stories that are so boring. And that is because the author was not using a variety of sensory details, was not using those varied um, sentence lengths, and was not having good sentence fluency throughout the story. It bores people. It does, makes them not want to read your paper. 
We also have vivid descriptions such as um, movies in your mind. So that means being able to take that picture in your brain and actually be able to see it in your brain what is happening while it is happening. Also letting know specific details that might only be in your character's minds. Um, you want to make sure that your character is able to truly visualize or see in their mind a picture of this story. You also want to talk about the mood or atmosphere of the story. Um, so you want to be able to convey to your reader why they want to read this book. What is the purpose? Are you trying to make them feel sad, happy, horrific, silly? Are you trying to persuade them to agree with you? Are you trying to make them feel or empathize with you? All these things go into making that reader want to truly read your story. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to be looking at essays. So, and we're only talking about the introduction. Now, remember, essays are multi-paragraph, more than one paragraph. As a fifth grader, you should be writing between four to five paragraphs by the end of the school year. Not Maybe not right this very moment, but by the end of the school year, you should be writing four to five paragraphs. So we're going to talk about our introduction, our first paragraph. These are the key things that should go into your first paragraph, the beginning one. So first, we need an attention getter, which we call a hook. This makes your audience really interested in wanting to read your story, in wanting to read your paper. These are one of the first things that we're going to talk about with our essays. Then we need a thesis statement, which is a purpose. Why are we writing this, why are we writing this essay? What is the purpose behind it? Then we start to give a little background information, the book and the author, maybe some of the storyline. Lastly, we're going to be talking about um, listing the topics that we're going to see in each paragraph in order. So this outlines your essay. It says, first, we're going to read about this. Next, we're going to learn about this. Last, we're going to learn about this. And this is all in that introduction paragraph. This is going to outline the rest of your essay. Um, our conclusion sentence just helps us transition into our first body paragraph, which is would be the first thing on your outline for your essay. I hope this helps get you a good start to your essay writing and understanding why it's important that we have all these different conventions for writing and why it's so important that we're constantly practicing writing many days a week because it's something you will always have to use. Just a reminder that even no matter what profession you go into as you get older, you might not be writing essays and paragraphs, but it is preparing you for the real world The real world, because you need to make sure that you're literate. We need to make sure that you're presenting yourself in a very high esteem and regard, no matter what profession you decide to go into. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Make sure you have answered all the questions throughout this reading, and I will see you later.